Welcome to Alvin and the Chipmunk Storybook and Tape, entitled The Easter Chipmunk. Whenever you hear this sound, <coughs> you'll know it's time to turn the page. <coughs> As Easter was approaching, Alvin, Simon, and Theodore decided to surprise their Grandpa Chipmunk at Happy Farms. Well, boys, these early Easter goodies are mighty thoughtful, he said. Yeah, Grandpa. Look, this one's really neat, exclaimed Theodore as he held up a colorful candy egg. Just then, the chipmunks heard a sweet voice through the bushes. Oh, my darling nephew, aren't you sweet? Oh, who's sweet? asked Alvin. Mr. Hoppity, explained Grandpa. He loves to surprise his Aunt Bunny. Alvin's eyes went wide as he said, Mr. Hoppity! Theodore gasped. <gasps> the Easter Bunny? Grandpa laughed. Yep. <laughs> Before you could say hopping down the bunny trail, the three chipmunks raced over to Aunt Bunny and Mr. Hoppity. <laughs> Theodore couldn't contain his excitement. Excuse me! Excuse me! Excuse me! Yes? Asked Mr. Hoppity. Uh, well, um, you know, I, I really, really like the chocolate eggs, but I I'm not a big fan of the purple ones. Explained Theodore. Simon interrupted. Theodore, he's not here to take our order. Mr. Hoppity smiled at the three boys, pulled up his sleeves like a magician, and presto, three colorful Easter eggs appeared in his hand. He gave one to each of the boys. They couldn't believe their good fortune. Thanks! They exclaimed. Alvin was still in a trance as he walked over to Grandpa. I touched the real Easter Bunny. Theodore picked up Grandpa's basket of goodies and offered it to him. These look delicious, boy, said Grandpa. But I can't eat them. I've got to get in shape in time to deliver these baskets for Easter. You know, I was the original Easter chipmunk. Alvin, Simon, and Theodore's mouths dropped open in amazement. Alvin turned to Simon and said, We may have nuts in our family tree. <laughs> the next day, Alvin had forgotten all about Grandpa and started recording a song for Mr. Hoppity. Meanwhile, Simon and Theodore were busy in the kitchen coloring Easter eggs. Alvin burst into the kitchen, bumping into the colored eggs and spilling them all over Simon. Alvin looked at his rainbow-colored brother and asked, Think Mr. Hoppity will like my song? Simon, wiping the dye off his glasses, said, Oh, Alvin, admit it. You're just sucking up to him to get some extra goodies in your basket. Alvin looked crushed. What a cruel thing to say. Then he grinned. Do you think it'll work? Before Simon could answer, Alvin was on his way to see Mr. Hoppity's Aunt Bunny. Alvin found Aunt Bunny at home, working on an odd-looking clay sculpture. Not knowing what it was supposed to be, Alvin said, My goodness! Isn't that... something? Why, thank you, dear, said Aunt Bunny. Alvin handed her his tape. Could you give this tape to your nephew, Mr. Hoppity? He asked. Just put it over there, she said, as she molded a fourth ear on her sculpture. Alvin wondered, So, how did he come up with the idea of Easter baskets and Easter eggs? That's just brilliant! Aunt Bunny shook her head. Oh, dear, that wasn't his idea. Alvin gasped. <gasps> it wasn't? Was it a rabbit? Aunt Bunny replied, Oh, goodness, no. Oh, there's the lunch bell. Sorry, dear, but I have to run. Aunt Bunny ran off leaving a very bewildered chipmunk behind. This means Grandpa was telling the truth, thought Alvin. And, and who knows, in a few years... Alvin began to daydream, imagining himself on the Easter throne in the Holiday Hall of Fame. Is my favorite grandson, Grandpa said. I leave Easter to you, Alvin. Alvin was beaming. Let me introduce you to some of the members, Grandpa continued. Santa Claus, meet my grandson, Alvin. Ho, 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 said Santa. I'm sure you and I will become very good friends. Alvin was starstruck. I'll be on a first-name basis with Santa. He snapped out of his dream, saying, But first, I've got to prove Mr. Hoppity isn't the original Easter Bunny. When Alvin told Simon and Theodore what Aunt Bunny had said, 
Simon insisted they needed more proof. At the Holiday Institute, Simon leafed through a very old book. All the holiday records are kept here, said Simon. Suddenly, he found the page he was looking for. Very interesting, he said. I can't tell if it's the end of a cottontail or if it continues behind the tree like a chipmunk's. And unfortunately, the page is torn by the ears. Hard to say if it's a bunny or a chipmunk. I'm telling you, it's a chipmunk, snorted Alvin. And Mr. Hoppity isn't going to take Grandpa's credit. And with that, Alvin stormed off. <coughs> the next day, Alvin walked in while Simon and Theodore were playing in their room. Alvin, where have you been? Asked Simon. Striking a blow for justice answered Alvin as he turned on the television. Stay tuned as a current story investigates is the Easter Bunny really the Easter Chipmunk? announced the reporter. Simon was shocked. Are you crazy? You've got no proof! Alvin laughed and said, Oh no? With Aunt Bunny, the picture at the Institute, and Grandpa, I've got all the proof I need. Simon rolled his eyes in disbelief. Theodore looked at Alvin and warned, Oh, it's Dave gonna be mad at you! Alvin smiled smugly. Leave Dave to me. Dave was about to turn on his TV just as Alvin, Simon, and Theodore were walking by. Afraid Dave might hear about his scheme, Alvin raced over and turned off the TV. You know, Dave, I'm a bit concerned by the amount of television you seem to be watching lately. He lectured. What happened to relaxing with a good book? Alvin quickly picked up a book and pushed Dave into his easy chair, saying, Remember, you're our role model. Dave, looking a bit confused, replied, Gee, Alvin, thanks for the input. Alvin strutted out to join his brothers in the hall. When this is over, Grandpa will get his credit and Dave will be the proudest dad alive. Simon and Theodore weren't so sure. <laughs> Alvin was a man with a mission. He went from newspapers to magazines, from talk shows to new shows, telling everyone of Mr. Hoppity's deception. Simon finally snapped. Alvin, this has gotten totally out of control. He cried. You haven't even given Mr. Hoppity a chance to defend himself. Alvin quickly shot back. Then why don't we pay Mr. Hoppity a visit at Bunny Central? But how do we get in? Asked Theodore. Only people who work for him are allowed to go inside. Simon raised an eyebrow and answered. Oh, I'm sure Alvin can come up with something. The something Alvin came up with surprised even Simon. Alvin, this is not what I had in mind, said Simon in a silly-looking chicken costume. Alvin reasoned that since a lot of chickens worked at Bunny Central laying Easter eggs, chicken costumes were the way in. Alvin adjusted his feathers and told the boys, Just try to blend in. Remember, you're chickens. Walk like chickens. Talk like chickens. <laughs> Once inside Bunny Central, the chipmunks couldn't believe their eyes. It was amazing. Chickens were busy laying eggs, which traveled along conveyor belts, landing in front of bunnies. The bunnies painted beautiful designs on the eggs and placed them on conveyor belts, which deposited them in waiting Easter baskets. In another area, marshmallow eggs were being dipped in chocolate and robotic bunnies were taking phone orders. How about our exercise video? Bunny buns of steel. The chipmunks couldn't have been more amazed until Mr. Hoppity himself ran past them and into a door marked private. The chipmunks tiptoed over to the door and saw an opening above it. Boost me up, whispered Alvin. Alvin peeked in and saw Mr. Hoppity in a room full of money. This isn't enough money, not nearly enough, cried Mr. Hoppity. Alvin whispered to Simon and Theodore, He's doing it all for money. 
Alvin pulled out his secret tape recorder just in time to catch Mr. Hoppity saying, oh, We've got to make more money. I need every dollar I can get for Bunny Central. Simon and Theodore shook their heads in disbelief. But we should probably report this to the proper authorities, said Simon. Alvin quickly countered, And leave this den of iniquity in operation, not on your life. <laughs> Alvin began taking one of the robo-bunnies apart, saying, You've made your last sale, bunny boy. Simon wasn't sure this was the right thing to do. I feel like a criminal, Alvin. Alvin looked at Simon in disbelief. You? Mr. Hoppity's the criminal? We've got him on two counts. Taking credit from dear old Grandpa and making a profit for his own personal gain. Soon, each and every robo-bunny was just a big bucket of bolts. Alvin turned to his brothers triumphantly and said, After I take Mr. Hoppity to court, victory will be mine. I mean, Grandpa's. On the day of the trial, the courtroom was overflowing. Alvin looked confident as he questioned Mr. Hoppity. Now, do you deny making this statement? Alvin turned on his tape recorder. Uh, we've got to make more money. I need every dollar I can get for Bunny Central. Mr. Hoppity squirmed and said, I, uh, I, I, I didn't want anyone to know about it. And why was that? Demanded Alvin. Well, I, uh, wanted to make the donations to the charities anonymously. Replied Mr. Hoppity. Alvin's mouth nearly hit the floor. He ran over to Simon and said, What do I do now? Simon shrugged. You're the guy with all the ideas. Alvin glared at him, then got an idea. Wait, I can still prove he stole Grandpa's credit. Alvin spun around, announcing dramatically, I call Aunt Bunny to the stand. <laughs> Meanwhile, Dave was at home, surrounded by dozens of books he'd already read. Oh, how he longed to watch just a little TV. He looked around carefully to see if anyone was watching. Realizing the coast was clear, Dave turned on the television. I don't think a little TV will hurt. The announcer began, Welcome to this edition of Court TV. Let's go inside where Alvin Seville is cross-examining his next witness. Dave jumped out of his chair. Roll model my Aunt Fanny! He roared as he stormed out of the house. All eyes were on Aunt Bunny as she took the stand. Alvin began. Now, Aunt Bunny, your nephew, Mr. Hoppity, is he the original Easter Bunny? Why, no, Aunt Bunny replied. Everyone was shocked. In fact, was the original deliverer of Easter baskets a bunny at all? Asked Alvin pointedly. Aunt Bunny shook her head and said, Oh, no, no, no. Once again, the audience was stunned. All except Alvin, who gestured victoriously. I think that proves, once and for all, Mr. Hoppity's grandfather, Herr Hoppity, was the original Easter Bunny, interrupted Aunt Bunny. Now it was Alvin's turn to be shocked. But you said the original Easter Bunny wasn't a rabbit. That's right, agreed Aunt Bunny. It was a hare. Rabbits, bunnies, hares, what's the difference? Ranted Alvin. Oh, there's quite a difference, believe me, answered Aunt Bunny. At least to us. <laughs> Alvin knew he was in trouble with a capital T. Then he got another idea. He turned to Mr. Hoppity and said, well, um, Mr. Hoppity, I'm sure you're wondering why I brought you here today. Everyone in the courtroom nodded their heads. Alvin continued, In a world where, uh, so little good news gets reported, you chose to keep your acts of kindness a secret. I say that's a crime, and it's got to stop right now. I, for one, am here to sing your praises to the whole world. With that, Alvin leaped into song. A chat, the cat, you know the cat was stopping. He never left, and once he started hopping, you'll eat or sleep, and rain or if it's sunny, you can still get your Easter bunny. After
after he finished his song, the whole room was silent. No one knew what to say. A moment later, the silence was broken with a resounding, Alvin! Alvin looked around to see a very angry David Seville standing in the doorway. Simon turned to Theodore and said, Now that's a proud dad. <coughs> After the courtroom fiasco, the chipmunks decided to visit Grandpa. As it turned out, one of Mr. Hoppity's secret charities was Happy Farms, and it never looked more beautiful. Alvin turned to Grandpa and said, Sorry I messed up the surprise, Grandpa, but I was only doing it so you'd get the credit you deserved. Simon nearly choked. Alvin? Okay, okay. And so I'd be a holiday hero, admitted Alvin. Grandpa put an arm around his grandson and said, Oh, well, all that's really important is that I deliver my Easter baskets. All four of them. Alvin looked at Grandpa stunned. Four? You mean four million? Grandpa laughed. Theodore counted on his fingers. You mean like one, two, three, four? Grandpa nodded. Well, that was my best year. Alvin couldn't believe it. But what about the rest of the baskets? Oh, Mr. Hoppity always took care of them, explained Grandpa. Boy, is he fast, and so many in his family to help. The chipmunks were flabbergasted. Oh, no! <laughs> A little later, they heard Mr. Hoppity call out, Alvin! As he hopped into view, Alvin quickly put on his bunny suit, explaining, Well, I've got to be going now. I've got a few eggs to deliver. Theodore turned to Grandpa and said, Wasn't that sweet of Mr. Hoppity to let Alvin work off the damages to Bunny Central? Yep, he's a good egg, agreed Grandpa. Alvin hopped over to Mr. Hoppity and gathered as many Easter baskets as he could hold. They began hopping down the bunny trail, as Mr. Hoppity advised. It's a little more of a hopping motion. <laughs> yes, up and down, up and down. Alvin looked up to Mr. Hoppity and hinted. Have you ever thought of taking in a partner? You know, someone to follow in your footsteps. Personally, I love Easter. I could hop, hop, hop all day. Laying down with candy, you travel across the land. There's someone very near who really sees your grand. The chap, the cat, you know the cat won't stop him. He'll never rest. And once you start a hopping, you'll eat for sweet. And when you're at the sunny, you can prove that you're the Easter Bunny. Yeah.